Hello all, welcome back to SnowPro Group. Uh, we are going through the various concepts in Snowflake scripting. In the last video, we saw how to create a cursor and uh, uh, what are the different stages of the cursor and the different ways how we can call the cursor. Uh, and uh, today, so we will see how we can pass a parameter to a cursor and with some examples. So in the last video, we saw how to uh, write a cursor, the declaration of a cursor, as I highlighted here. And then we saw how to opening a cursor and fetching the records one after another, okay? So fetching the record from the cursor into variables, local variables that we have defined and then closing the cursor. And so these are the four, four stages that we discussed. So declaration, open, fetch, and close. So here, what I'm doing, I'm fetching the uh, records, record, uh, record from the cursor. So cursor always will have one record at a time as we discussed. So that record I'm trying to um, passing it to the variables. Here, there is a problem, suppose, uh, the cursor is defined on top of a table and table might have suppose 10 columns. So when you uh, need to use those uh, columns in your code, so you may need to define 10 variables. Suppose I need employee number and employee name. So I have defined it two, col two columns here. Suppose I need all 10 columns for my calculations in the code, then I might need to define all 10 columns here. So which is a tedious job for us. And second thing, uh, you need to make sure the sequence of the table columns when you are defining the variables to capture the data from the record, right? So in order to uh, avoid that one, then the for loop is the best way of doing it for loop. So here, the advantage is you need not to define a variable. So suppose if you need to, you know, um, use uh, the, the columns values in your code. So what you can do is just define a for loop and define a cursor variable. This is a local variable for the cursor. This is implicitly defined. If you see, I didn't define this one anywhere here. But in the for loop cursor, this variable will be implicitly defined. And then uh, cursor will pass that record to this variable. So this is a collection of columns on that record. So whatever the column you need, you can directly refer that and use it, right? So for example, if I execute this one, so you can see that uh, at the open, it will fetch the records uh, and the create active set. And in for loop, um, this uh, first record from the cursor will be assigned to this variable. In this variable, you, you will have all the columns, whichever the column you need to refer, you can directly refer and display it. So let's run this one and see the data came here, 9369, Tony, right? So like that you can define. Um, so another thing is, um, so this open is also, is not mandatory. You can go with the for loop cursor directly and then uh, do it. Let's do that one more time. Okay, so open is not mandatory. So we are directly going with the for loop cursor. So only the declaration of the cursor we are doing here. And then in the for loop, we are trying to access um, all the records one after another. Um, so the cursor will uh, pass the first record to this. And then we are just coming out with the first record only. But suppose if I need to uh, print the 10th record, okay? So first thing what I will do is, um, I will define a counter by passing the default value as zero. And then here I'll increase the counter every every time when the 
uh, cursor uh, pass the record to this variable. Okay, so first record, when it fetch, the counter will increase and it becomes one. Okay, so now I need a 10th record. So here I'll write the if statement. If counter is equal to 10, then, then only I will return. Until that, I will not return anything. Okay, so here I will try to return the counter value as well. Okay, so what I am returning here, the counter value and the employee code and employee first name for the 10th, uh, for the 10th employee. So let's run this one. You can see that uh, counter is a 10. So I'm displaying 10th record employee code and uh, employee first name. Go to this table and see whether that is really true or not. So I'm going to worksheet and then querying the table. If you see what is the 10th record, you can see that. So this is the one that we are displaying. So let's let us run this code in snowflake side okay i'm removing everything so now this is the anonymous block no need to define the variables as well but i defined only the counter to capture the 10th um uh, employee so let's execute this one you can see the date counter 10 and the uh, employee code and employee ID. So uh, this is an example for uh, defining a parameter uh, in a cursor. So there might be scenarios where you might need to pass a uh, value to a cursor during the runtime uh, in order to capture a particular section of data. So here, uh, what I'm doing is I have defined a cursor and then um, uh, in the where class, I am passing a variable here, parameter rather, department code, I am passing a parameter there with a question mark. And during the, um, uh, this question mark is nothing but a parameter, but uh, what will happen is when the when I am opening a cursor, I am passing actual value to the parameter. Here I am passing the department number 10. Uh, so this for loop cursor after opening and passing the parameter 10 to that, this for loop cursor will return all the employees associated to the department number 10. And uh, we will get the um, only the 10th department employees information. So what I'm doing here is uh, opening the cursor and by passing the variable value, uh, parameter value. And here I'm in making a count uh, for uh, each record that will uh, process through this for loop. So when I execute this, it should give the number of employees associated to the department number only, right? Because I'm selecting uh, with the where class passing the department number 10 to it. Okay. So let's run this and see what will happen. If you see, I got the value as three. So what that means is we have three employees uh, uh, belongs to the department number uh, 10. This can be checked by querying the table with the department code 10. So you can see that only 10, three records are there for the department code 10. All these three records information. So then what you can do is open cursor using the 10 and return table complete cursor can be written by using this return okay so let's comment this one and execute this one once you can see that all the records with the department 10 came 
now I will change this department passing value to 20 and see what will happen. Again, execute this. Now you can see six records came, all belongs to department code 20. Okay, so you can pass whatever you need to, uh, whatever the department you need here. Okay, so or you can loop three, uh, uh, loop uh, loop through the uh, uh, define a for loop and loop through all the records belongs to that department for other further calculations as well. Okay, so you can see that all department thirty is displaying. So here, what we did, we defined a cursor with a parameter, but we didn't pass the parameter directly here, and we are making a decision what department needs to be passed here uh, when we, we are opening a cursor and returning. Uh, the cursor as a table to display the data. Okay. So hope this gives more um, understanding on the cursor, how we can use. Thank you. Please subscribe Snow Pro Group for more videos and comment for uh, any particular concept that uh, you want me to uh, do video on it. Thank you so much.